I'm gonna tell you if the incline bench is better than the flat bench for throws, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from throwsuniversity.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you are interested in everything about throwing, you wanna learn how to improve your glide, you wanna learn how to improve your rotational technique in the shot, and you wanna improve that discus rotational technique, make sure you comment down below, you like, you subscribe, and you start to watch our videos to help you become a champion. So throughout the years at Throws University, we've gotten tons of questions about what's better, the incline bench or the flat bench, and how do these lifts carry over to the throws? And a lot of guys will analyze the lifts from joint angles. They'll try to argue that the incline bench transfers better to the shot put and better to the discus because of the joint angle. They'll argue that the flat bench is better because you can have a bigger load. Whatever it is, there's constant discussion behind it, but it's not that simple. We've got to recognize that one, these movements are tools and they're very important tools behind training. But after that, we got to ask ourselves four key questions. Once we answer those questions, then we can dive deep into what is needed for the shot put and for the discus. My first key question behind the incline bench versus the flat bench is what is the weakness in that individual thrower? I like to use the bench press, the flat bench, to analyze where the weakness is. Are their elbows flaring out? If they are, their shoulders are probably stronger than their triceps. And if that's the case, it's important to keep building their flat bench, even with a closer grip, to target those triceps because the triceps are not as strong as the shoulders. If they tend to pinch their elbows in on the flat bench, now you can see that their triceps are quite a bit stronger because that's where their body wants to track their elbows. And now we can start to recognize that we've got to develop that strength in the shoulders and we need to utilize the incline bench to improve their shoulder connection into their pecs. If that's the case, obviously the incline bench is going to have a greater carryover for that specific individual. That second key question, how much overhead work are your athletes already doing? In our training system at Throws University, we tend to use quite a bit of push presses. We use a lot of jerks. We use a lot of power snatches, a lot of full snatches. A lot of this stuff tends to tax our shoulders. With that being said, we tend to back away from the incline bench. If we have three blocks in a row, typically out of those three blocks, two of those blocks are gonna have bench press one block will be incline bench press. So it's about a two to one ratio, but that's because we're already doing a lot of overhead work. We tend to tax our shoulders quite a bit in our training system, and we want them to be very, very strong. That means that we don't need the incline bench as much because we're doing so much overhead work with the push press and with the behind the neck jerk. That third big question, does their bench press need a bump? It's important to recognize that sometimes we bench too much. We become stagnant as coaches with our exercise selection. We become stagnant as athletes. And if that bench press does need a bump, it's very easy to bump that, that flat bench by bringing in that incline. Now you have a new angle. Now you have a new stimulus. Now you have more adaptation. So it's important to recognize when the bench press needs a bump and use the incline to push that bench press a little bit higher, it transfers very well to the flat bench, and the flat bench transfers very well over to the throws. That leads us to that fourth big question. How does the individual athlete transfer that strength over to the throw? That's a huge question. A lot of our guys transfer their strength really, really well from a flat bench. When their flat bench goes up, their standing throws might go up. When their standing throws might go up, now their full throws typically will go up. We'll see almost a direct correlation between that flat bench and their, and their throws in the circle. Some individuals, specifically gliders, tend to do very well with transferring the incline over to the throw. That's an individualized aspect. Make sure that you study your athletes. Make sure you study their results. Make sure you see how they do in specific programs when they're using the flat bench and when they're using the incline bench and individualize that 
based off of their own reaction. If I have a thrower that does really, really well with the incline and it transfers to the circle, they will use the incline in their peak base program. So it takes years to figure out which lift is actually better for specific throwers. But we've got to remember, they're both very effective tools. They're both very good at increasing strength and they're both very good at increasing dynamic speed from a pressing movement. Take time to develop the movement patterns. Take time to recognize how your shoulders are handling that stress. Take time to recognize how they transfer over to those big throws and understand that you as the athlete, or if you're the coach, that your athletes are your best means of education. It's not as simple as incline is better than flat bench or vice versa. It takes time to study that result and that is an individualized result for optimal throwing. If you want more information behind throws based training, make sure you click on this link right here, guys. That's all for today. Peace.